My first guest tonight is Ten Kenneth, Kenneth Juster, till recently, till 2021, uh, US Ambassador to India. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador Juster. Uh, this is a big visit, four days. Uh, and uh, I'm sure, you know, India is placing a lot of interest in it. Uh, from the American perspective, what is the significance of this visit, Ambassador? Well, this is another major step in the uh, warming and strengthening of the U.S.-India strategic partnership that's really been transformed over the last 22 years. And this is just another major milestone uh, with a heavy emphasis on defense and technology. Uh, you know, I saw this article by former Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi who says that this is all aimed at harassing China's economic progress. How do you view, you know, this intriguing response from the Chinese to this visit? Well, I uh, fear that's a bit of an overreaction by the Chinese. The U.S.-India strategic partnership stands on its own apart from any issues relating to China. When the two countries began transforming their relationship uh, in 2000-2001, the United States had a very uh, warm relationship with China and India for many years has uh, worked well with China. India still has in the United States uh, a lot of trade with China. Uh, but both countries uh, want to prevent any hegemonic power in the region and want to have a free and open Indo-Pacific and are working together to have a positive vision for the region overall, not one that's designed to contain or damage China, but one that's making sure that uh, the issues of most interest and the values uh, that the United States and India share will be part of the Indo-Pacific architecture, including free trade, uh, open uh, navigation, open uh, air flights, uh, peaceful resolution of disputes, no predatory economic actions, and uh, overall a positive agenda for all the countries in the region. Yes, Ambassador. Uh, you know, India has also been very independent in its foreign policy uh, post-Ukraine. During the war, our Prime Minister has said very clearly that this is no time for war and has always pushed for efforts towards peace. Now, having said that, uh, it's great that, you know, we've approved the acquisition of Predator drones. The U.S. has signed an executive order making, uh, to approve making of F-14 fighter jets in India. Uh, what is the expectation, and if any, in terms of defense and strategic cooperation well, again, I uh, from think America towards high, India? Yeah, I think there are very high expectations, and the defense relationship has been an important pillar of the overall partnership. We've gone from virtually selling no military equipment to India to over $20 billion, and my understanding is that there will be the signing of an agreement to sell uh, drones to India, perhaps up to 31 drones for over $3 billion. Uh, there'll also be, my understanding is, a uh, agreement to allow General Electric to transfer some significant uh, manufacturing technology to India for its uh, jet engines and to do co-production uh, in India. But this is really just a further step in what has been a uh, advancing a defense relationship for a number of years. That's included uh, more military exercises and more complex ones together and with other countries. That has included foundational agreements for logistics and secure communications and sharing of geospatial information and industrial cooperation. We'll now also work closely together on innovation and on a critical and emerging technologies. So again, a significant part of the upcoming summit uh, meeting and state visit will be devoted to advances in the defense partnership and technology partnership. But this is consistent with the uh, increasing partnership that has been taking place over the last 20 plus years. Ambassador, lastly, uh, you know, is this uh, I'll just exp uh, give my perspective in detail and you can respond in as much detail as you wish. Okay. What our viewers of Republic would want to know is whether there's been a maturing now of the relationship between India and the U.S., where the U.S. recognizes and accepts that there may not be a formal military alliance, 
but there will still be strengthened defense and economic cooperation. And that this does not require uh, aggression from either side, especially not the US. Ambassador, two years back you wrote a very interesting piece, April 2021, about the fact that there does not need to be the threat of sanctions hanging like a sword of Democles over US-India relations. And you had said that keeping the possibility of CATSA sanctions lurking over the relationship jeopardizes American interests by eroding trust and cooperation. In that sense, I think, Ambassador, it's, it's very good that America is doing business, transacting in defense deals and technology without having that expectation and India will be part of a formal military alliance. Has that well, changed we, now? Yeah. Have things really changed in two years or more? Well, I think we've always understood that we don't have an alliance with India. We have a strategic partnership. We've always understood India's desire to have uh, some degree of uh, independence in its foreign policy and strategic autonomy. So that's not something that we've had to uh, learn over time. It's something that has been present from the outset. But we've also provided roadmaps and glide paths to increasing our strategic partnership from our high technology cooperation group, our initiative on the next steps in strategic partnership to our civil nuclear deal, to naming India as a major defense partner, to our cooperation in a range of issues, including energy security uh, and the like. And now this uh, state visit will be another major step forward in that relationship, focusing on some increased uh, defense cooperation and co-production, as I mentioned, of the GE engine, some further military sales. So I don't think there's been some sea change. I think there's just been an increased uh, deepening and widening of our relationship, but understanding that we won't see eye to eye in everything. It's not a military alliance and that we'll discuss our differences candidly and openly and uh, appreciate them. Uh, and so uh, that's the way I see this as really part of a continuity over the last 20 plus years among different U.S. administrations and different uh, governments in India about the importance of our partnership uh, in this century and in shaping what we hope will be a very positive and, and good architecture in the Indo-Pacific region. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's Kenneth Justa, Ambassador Justa, may I say that you have, you, have, you have really been, really been a positive force and a pragmatist on India-US relations. I appreciate the time you've given me and the straightforwardness with which you place the India-US relationship. Thank you very much, Ambassador Justin. Can I, can I add one thing? Please, uh, please do, please do. Uh, the CATSA sanctions were never designed to be something imposed against India. They were designed to restrict uh, concerns about uh, Russia and terrorism. And so my point was when India was buying the S-400, which was a deal that yeah, was virtually yeah, but, done for the sanctions that it made no sense to have this yeah. hanging over the relationship. I, I, I appreciate like that anybody. completely. May I just, since you added that point, I'll just add one of mine before I wrap up. Sure. That, you know, as you yourself said, talking about CATSA makes people remember 1998. We, we carried out the nuclear test. It was an assertion of our sovereignty. There were sanctions against India. And I think the important thing in 25 years, we both matured. And U.S. also recognizes India will do its own thing, and yet we can have a great relationship. Ambassador. I, I was involved in the roadmap that got India out of the sanctions and entities off of the sanctions list. And so I understand that completely. And as I said, I'm greatly gratified to see how this relationship has developed in a very positive way over the last 20 plus years. Absolutely. And I would say again, you played a big role in this visit. The build up 2017 to 2021 in your term uh, has had a lasting impact on this visit. So I'm sure you will look at it keenly. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much.